I listened to an interview this week with Paul Tudor Jones. It's an older interview, but they were asking what's like the most important skill to become a good trader. And it triggered something in my brain that said, oh man, that's exactly like poker. And that is you want to minimize your losses, minimize your risk. And how does he do that? So when he executes a trade, he takes a position, he says what he thinks is going to happen, but then he puts in his stop loss so that if he's wrong, he's going to be automatically kicked out of that trade without getting emotional and having to wait and deciding to hold on longer. And this made me think back to poker. Depending on how we play poker or trade, both things can be done with a ton of variance, right? You can take on an immense amount of risk and your risk of ruin is going to go through the roof. Now, if you don't know what risk of ruin is, it's basically the probability that you lose your bankroll over time. So the higher you lift your stakes, the more you play above and beyond your means, the more you go all in on one bet, the more likely it is you're going to have a, you have a higher risk of ruin, the more likely that you'll destroy your entire bankroll. Now that's true of investing or in poker, but let's, let's talk about an example really quick. So let's say we'll kind of compare it in both fields. Let's say that you're an average player, but you decide you're going to step up and you're going to play with your entire bankroll for one buy-in of 1020. Well, you're, you're a one-two player. You've built up this bankroll and it can only buy you in one time to a 1020 game, or it can buy you in 10 times to a one-two game. Now, if you go play that game one time, you could end up doubling or tripling your bankroll, but the odds of you going bust are through the roof. Now, the odds of you losing 10 sessions in a row for all 10 of those buy-ins is extremely low, especially at a lower stake with less impressive opponents. Trading is the same way. So if I decide I like, oh, I don't know. Let's say I'm like, I'm all in on one of the meme stocks, Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm all in on Bed Bath & Beyond um, back when it was hot and it was trading and stuff. And I just, I buy it. I'm going to hold it forever. And if this stock goes to the moon, I'm going to win. And it goes bankrupt and I lose everything. Because I was all in on one bet, one company. I put everything into this one move. Now I've given myself an immense risk of ruin. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that with our poker or with our trading. And as I was listening to Paul, I was just thinking, man, that is such good wisdom. And it comes down to even like smaller decisions that we make, right? When you sit down at the poker table, your decision preflop, am I going to play a seven offsuit from middle position or am I going to fold that? That is a risk mitigation factor, right? Your ability to fold a hand that you probably shouldn't play preflop is cutting down the likelihood that you're going to lose your entire stack throughout the night. If you're new to poker, maybe, or if you're newer to poker, I would encourage you to think about how you're approaching it and how much risk you're putting on the table with every decision you make. So like if I am, if I get to the flop and I'm making a decision, keep in mind that your preflop decisions are tiny, your flop decisions are bigger, turn river like as you go your decisions get more consequential the big takeaway that i think is important is whether you're investing or you're playing poker we want to try to find high equity spots that's what we're looking for let me give you an example really quick i'm gonna put this chart up of american express now this is a company that i've been looking at a little bit lately i'm not going to get into all the you know all the fundamentals behind the company I, I've been doing research on it, but just looking at this chart, you can kind of see some of the support lines that I've put in here where I think there's potential for it to bounce off the channel that it's working in. I also think there's a support line that it may hit. And if it breaks through both of those, it may retrace all the way down to an additional support line. So as I'm looking at this stock, if my thesis was, I think it's going to bounce off that channel line and go higher. I'm going to watch for it. And if I see it bouncing, I might go, okay, this is a company I like. It's one that I'm willing to hold. And I want to make this trade. I want to get in. And I think this is the right time. I'd go ahead and take my position, set my stop loss, and then hope that I'm correct. Now follow it. And if it stops out, okay, I was wrong or my timing was bad. Let me give you a quick poker hand example as well. Let's say you have a uh, pocket Kings preflop and you make a bet. You get one caller. You go to the flop and the flop comes out uh, queen, jack, four. And so you're feeling pretty good. There is a very strong likelihood that you have the best hand. You're not losing to much. You're losing to pocket fours. You're losing to queen jack. And your opponent, because they didn't three bet, you probably doesn't have queens or jacks. So you're in a spot where you're a huge favorite in this hand. So you should be piling the money in. Occasionally, very rarely, but occasionally, an opponent's going to push back at you. And they're going to start putting all the money into the middle. And you're going to have to ask yourself, 
okay, is this one of those rare times where they have queen jack or fours? But let's let's just say that uh, let's say that you turn a king. So now there's a three liner to a straight. They would need exactly ten nine, but you have a set, and that set you know is going to be good the majority of the time. Even though they could have an ace ten and they could have ten nine, those hands are possible. It's still a favorable spot. Still a spot you're going to want to put some money in. And so you start putting money in as a favorite. And maybe by the river, a fourth card hits and they make the straight. But going in, you were making a good decision up to that point. And so you were choosing a high equity spot. And then maybe by the river, you need to decide, okay, there's a four liner and they just jammed all in. Maybe my set's no good here and you need to be willing to let it go. Okay, over to the account. This week, like I said, has been very negative. Let's go back to August 11th. The account balance was $8,711.01. Now, the week has been very negative. I think the NASDAQ's down over 3% up to this point. And my account is down uh, less than $5. So I'm at $8,706.55. And I'm really happy with that. That's because I've got my positions that are losing some value, but I've got all this, uh, all those short positions and volatility positions I was telling you about, and those are really making up the difference. So anything I've been losing, I've been making back on the other side. The question is going to be if we actually see there's kind of some critical supports that we may be breaking this week, and if those really start to break down and we see a big negative trend, I may have to decide how much I want to trim out of my positions now and put some cash on the sideline and allow the short position to try to run. So that decision will be coming next week. I don't like to sell out of many of these, but I have like Apple stock that is more of a growth stock than a dividend payer. I like the company, but if the market's really taking a turn, I can temporarily let go of that stock and then come and buy back into my position after I feel like the market is done bottoming out or done making a, you know, kind of a bear move here. As for poker, like I said, flat so far because I'll be playing in the next day or two and I'll report those earnings. Hopefully we get a nice big win. I did decide that I was going to no longer shave until I get a win. So hopefully I can book a win and not just turn into uh, Bigfoot. That is not my goal. I would like to look like a respectable human being, uh, but we'll see what happens depending on how these sessions go. That's the update for this week. Thanks for being here and hanging out. I sure appreciate you. Hope your poker goes well. Hope your investing goes well. I'll talk to you next time.